What's going on, guys? We are back with another replay analysis. And uh, everything's green now. So that's fun. Death Pain coming out. Let's see if this fixes itself. It did. Okay, Death Pain, he said he is a high champ 2, low champ 3. This is one of his first games of the day when he sent this one in. So he says usually he needs a little bit of a warm up to help that out. Uh, but he got his replay analyzed by going to patreon.com slash gibbs00. Go there. Check out replays, free play. We got a rando potato tournament next month, so if you want to sign up for that, make sure you sign into the $5 plus Patreon tier for 75 bucks on the line, at least for that rando potato tournament, so that should be a lot of fun. But anyway, let's get into the actual replay. I started it over because I thought I was going to be done with my spiel in time, but I'm not. Uh, so let's get into it right off the start here. Fine kickoff, you know, no, nothing too crazy. Um, uh, This challenge is fine. I think you're better off at this point probably going for the boost pickup. Like, I can see why you might want to go for this challenge. It's not the end of the world. But I think boost pickup might have been more valuable there. So, uh, he has a chance to get it here. One thing he can do uh, off this wall since he is... Uh, uh, since he did hop off it, is he could wave dash here. I'm surprised he doesn't. Like, he could just wave dash front flip or diagonal flip and cancel it on the ground. Uh, so you don't even have to do a lot to make that happen. It's just basically will make you get there a little faster. Or just flip towards the boost. Because... Say you, uh, wave dashing is weird because wave dashing, I feel like a lot of people do it unnecessarily where they'll wait till they're close to the ground to do a wave dash to gain speed, but you can gain more speed or quicker speed, I guess, and get up to the top speed, uh, faster and travel further by just flipping immediately, uh, right after you jump, as long as you don't need to control your car on the ground immediately after here, you really don't have to. So you could have just flipped into the boost and then kept on going. But anyway, that's just a small nitpick I have. Just rotating back, trying to play it safe here. So come out for this challenge. He is the third man here, so it is a little bit dangerous. The other two are, you know, over there. Um, but this third guy, or the first guy, I should say, with Invader Zed, he, uh, it, like, it looked like it was messy, right? So I could see why you'd go for this challenge. The problem is, once you realize you lost it, just try to keep control of your car and keep in the play. The one nice thing is that uh, he makes uh, like Invader Zed actually go up really high and go for a pass, which will waste enough time for his teammates to rotate back, which they do. They didn't get the touch, though. We got a little bit of a save here, a little bit of a panicky save. Um, so if he does a double jump here, uh, like a double jump aerial, he'll get more height on this, and he doesn't have to worry about doing the side flip, and he would have made an easier save. But he still makes the save happen and gets a little lucky that he's in place for the secondary save. But hey, whatever works, right? And then just a random pinch goes in. Cool. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so that was nice. Next kick off here. He gets the boost. It's a replay bug. Why it's not there. He's just rotating back. Just trying to play it safe. Wait this out. Feel out what's about to come. A lot of cars coming at him. Uh, good jump here. The one thing I would have liked to see him do, maybe, is jump and actually boost towards... Uh, like out of the field because now you have someone rotating back in and when you're in the air like as long as you have boost then you can still have control so get in position to be maybe a little bit more in the middle to help support this 50 50 if it does spill out into the middle instead of being in net since you have another player in net as well instead he kind of just chills in this corner which is fine because it does work out but uh, like there's two cars in this position right so you don't necessarily need to here like i would like to see him in the middle just in case something weird happened and had a 50-50 go out to that third man on the other team. And then if it doesn't happen, then you, you just rotate behind your teammate anyway who's about to clear this. So it wouldn't have been that bad. But a nice half volley clear off the wall there. Uh, the only problem is it is a little bit low. Uh, you generally want to try and keep those as close to the ceiling as possible. And it's actually a relatively hard shot by the other team. Uh, who crept out? The, see, the one problem here, it's not really his fault. He actually gets this out relatively far. He gets it out to midfield. So it's not the worst thing in the world uh, if the other team shoots here. The problem is his teammate just randomly starts driving out of net for no reason. So that's more on his teammate than anything. So it's clear at the end of the day, it's not the worst thing in the world. Because it is uh, the most important thing is that it's in the air. Because if it's on the ground where he can do a half volley or control it, it's a little bit harder of a play for the goalie because we can see a 1v1 play or just him nailing it off the back wall. But since it's in the air still, it's harder for the other team to shoot it, harder for the other team to gain control. So, wasn't that bad of a play. It's more his teammates just kind of wandered out. I want to see if he's playing with teammates that he knows. No, he doesn't. Okay, just playing solos. Uh, this rotation here, so I don't mind him like turning around, but as soon as you see that guy going for it, uh, you should probably start spilling back out towards the other side or just going back 
Uh, he continues to drive towards the ball, uh, even though his teammate definitely has it. It just makes him uh, be a little late to that secondary ball, and now he has to retreat. But, again, not the end of the world. Uh, this play right here, a little bit dangerous as well, where he creeps out of net now, very similar to TG from earlier, uh, where he creeps out of net, but this is a play for the other team. At best, it's a 50-50, but just chill on the goal line and wait it out. It's not the end of the world. And someone got demoed. I didn't see who it was. He would have saw on his display. I, okay, it was the other team. So at least he does have a teammate to back him up. But I would like to see him just maybe wait an extra second on the goal line there. He still made the save. Though. Good boost grabs. Uh-oh. That's... Okay. <laughs> that worked out. Waiting this play out. Smart. Control it in the corner. Beautiful. Love it. The only thing I would like to see here is he controls in the corner. It's a little bit sloppy. It's not perfect. But I do like this instead of just booming it around on the side where it would have just turned back into orange possession most likely. Uh, so he misreads this a little bit. He kind of follows it towards the wall. Just a little bit too hard. But right here, you have to jump. You, It's hard to see if there's a person uh, when you're in ball cam. But you have to know that this challenge is coming. Um, and you just got to jump for that a little bit earlier just to at least threaten something. Again, just rotating back. Right now, it's just very simple, clean rotations. Nothing too crazy. Now they get to move out. He's playing midfield. He's just got to wait this one out because he seems to always be the third man right now. The one thing I would like to see here is he moves up a little bit, but when you're the last one back and the other two are rotating, then you want to be maybe a little bit further back and look for more of that boom and clear that a lot of people get off the walls. Say you were the second man in this situation, then I would like his position here where he kind of creeps up, hoping for that weak touch, and then, you know, do something with it. But because he's the third man, like, if this is a boom and clear, it might not necessarily go in. The other two might rotate back in time, but it's going to be a tough save, and it would just be easier if he's back to help that out. Um, so instead, it booms over his head, and now it gets into that awkward situation where he's going to try and control it in this corner. The other guy that, that just grabbed boost is probably going to want a piece of this ball, and it could force some double commits out. But a uh, good wall jump here. So, so I like this play. He, he goes up the wall, but immediately jumps, and he reorients his car so he can, like, you know, fly well. And does it pretty damn well. Not as high again um, as I want for... Uh, from these clears hit it a little bit low but i think he was basically at a boost at the time let me see uh yeah he had a little bit more boost to get under it maybe uh but still uh still really good clear nice and fast and at least it brings him back to midfield nice bump there as well on the defender so solid play there to get the ball out to give his team at least some breathing room here okay let's see what he does here he's gonna this out Going for the shot. He kind of just jumps early for this. And I think, like, so the thing is with this play right here. I'm going to go into fly view for this. Because he's been very passive this game. Uh, you know, wide rotations, just playing it safe. But when you're the second man, that's when you got to push up really far. Uh, so you see how his teammate's right there. His teammate uh, is the third man here. So we're going to watch this again. He comes out. His other teammate is not moving up, and he's kind of can see that, like, in his ball cap. He needs to push further up here. There shouldn't be two players at midfield when a third player is, like, in the corner trying to get a pass out. So he needs to be way, way closer here. So he's not close enough, so he has to jump early because he's expecting the goalie to make the play. Like, earlier, I guess. We'll see it again here. So, he's not sure exactly what the goal is going to do. Uh, the one thing that I always say, though, is when you can be grounded and then make up for the time in the air by just, you know, uh, jumping later, but still getting that same height, then you should definitely try and do that the more, uh, uh, more often, I should say. So... He jumps early, but this ball's not high, so there's really no point. He's basically just doing the same thing that he would do on the ground, but now in the air where he has less control. So he's just going to, like, glide towards this ball where, say, he was grounded, he could see what the goal is about to do and then reposition for a better 50-50 or a better dunk attempt to try and score this. But instead, he's kind of just forced into what uh, happened right there when if he just boosts on the ground, he's going to make the same exact speed, but then he can jump and figure out exactly what he wants to do with the ball when he sees what the goal is doing. But by jumping early, he kind of just shows like, Hey, here's what I'm going to do. There's not much else I can do at this point, And the goalie can make an easier save. Miss wall clear there, but his teammates there. Not the end of the world. 
Let's see. He all right. So he goes to attack this ball again. I don't like this once again, where this is very similar to the first play of the game, where it's orange control, and this one's even more orange control. He's the last man back, and the other two, as you can see on the screen, are rotating back. This ball is very likely going to get by him. It's not a good uh, idea to go for a 50-50 here because best case scenario, best case scenario is he wins the 50-50 and Invader Zed gets possession of the ball. This ball is not going to go in unless something really fluky happens. And the worst case scenario is he completely loses this. It turns into a pass and orange scores. So really the risk versus the reward heavily favors risk right now. So you don't... Want to be going for these, basically. Uh, that's basically what you always want to try and do. Sorry about this. We're going to go back. Um, is weigh your risk, weigh your reward. And if the risk is v way more dangerous, then should you be going for these plays? Probably not. Uh, I think we switched to, like, some other camera, too. And I have some hitting buttons. Uh, come on. Don't be the play review. Thank you. So, let's go back to this play. So it goes up. He loses this pretty cleanly. His teammates do get back just in time. They do just barely get back in time. But they are rushing. This uh, could very well turn into a double commit. It doesn't, which is good. But it's just a play that didn't necessarily need to happen. And now both of them have no boost, right? So if we look at his teammates, RL Plum, 26 boost. And his other teammate, which I forgot his name, TJ, TG, has 23 boost. So not a lot of boost now because of that decision to go for that challenge where the other two have to hustle back and not get boost. So now we're going to go back to death pain and we keep screwing up how this works. Thank you. So now this whole thing is like death pain has the boost so he can make plays, but no one else does. Now here's the problem. He flies for an unnecessary ball here. Like here's another case of risk versus reward. More so on the defensive side, right? It's like, all right, what's going to mitigate their scoring chances? Is this touch really going to do anything? Like, realistically, the uh, orange team sees him doing this. So now they're going to pull back and just try and gain midfield control. When, if orange went for this, they're probably not going to pass this very well. And he's going to be in net. Like, it's not the greatest passing opportunity. So I don't think it's that big of a deal to go for that play. Uh... See right there, like, like Orange just controls midfield and gets the ball out again. And the problem is, more so than anything, with him going for that play on that wall, is he uses his boost. Like, the one commodity that he had on his team, he uses it, and uh, it's a problem, you know? Now, here's another aerial uh, that's... I wouldn't call this one as, un uh, like, necessary because... His teammate goes up. You probably want to trust your teammate here. But on defense, it's hard to trust at times. Uh, so I get why you'd want to go up in case Orange is going up relatively quick. He does get to the ball first. And usually, the way I see it is, whoever can, can get to the ball first should probably do it. Plus, his teammate probably didn't have a boost. So he probably was not going to reach that. Uh, so I don't mind that play as much. But it just turns into plays like that that happened because of plays prior where... You use all your boost to not really gain anything out of it. Orange keeps possession. Now you have to make more panicky defensive plays and so on and so forth until a goal is scored usually. As we see here, Orange still has possession. Finally, TG. He gets the ball out. He got a 50-50. Two 50-50s in a row, so it really works out for his team. Let's see what he can do with this. The ball at least goes mid. Now he's got no boost, though, but that's okay. He just needs to get out of there. No real reason to stay on this play right now. He's just ball chasing. Uh, his teammate's there. He's going to make the play, or at least try to make the play. And there's boost available to grab. Just rotate out. It's one of the few times that he's being aggressive, but he bees aggressive at zero boost. Generally, you don't want to be aggressive at zero boost. It's not generally the best play, unless you can clearly see that, like, there's one defender left. My teammate is very likely going to beat him. I will stay upfield for that play. But usually, your third man is more well-equipped to come up anyway. Uh, so right there, kind of just ball chases a little bit. It puts that third man in that awkward spot where if he loses a challenge, it could be very bad. Luckily, his teammate doesn't. So it works out. And we move on. Okay, let's see what type of play he's got here. He's going to go for a little fake Aruni. So I like the idea here. He's got two options here. Or, like, a few options. He could, like, kind of dribble this. Like, really try and, uh, like, go for, like, a dribble flick. It's kind of hard because the ball's coming at him. He's going relatively fast. So it's probably going to pop. The other thing is smack it as hard as you can off the back wall, follow it up with a double tap. 
um, which is probably the better solution here because everyone is grounded on the orange team and no one's really near the walls. Maybe, maybe a uh, conqueror uh, over here could do it or whatever his name is. Uh, but that's probably the better play. There's also a lot of bumps going on. He could just shoot it on net, which is not the best idea. So I like, like option number two, not too bad here. Where he goes up in the air, tries to do some aerial thing, try and fake it, maybe get a dunk. He just puts the ball a little bit in front of him and doesn't follow closely enough behind it to force a 50-50. See if he can do this. Good idea. Nice shot. Beautiful. Nice goal there. So this is one of those plays where sometimes it's good to not flip right away when you're trying to leave the offensive side. So, like, he's trying to rotate out here, but he sees how well the hit that worked out to be now there's only one guy left on defense and if he can beat him he can score this and this is a good play right here he grabs a little bit of boost and then he's like sure i'm going for it and plus this is extremely safe we talk about risk versus reward both his teammates are behind him on the defensive side if he misses this it really doesn't cost him that much plus it could even fake out the third uh defender and then he could miss it or have a worse play. So it's not really that uh, risky at all. The reward, though, is obviously a goal. And he shoots it and puts it home. Nicely shot. Well done there. And we'll move on. Good bump. Got a lucky bump, but we'll take it. Ooh, this is a problem. So uh, TG just kind of, you know, lobs this right back up to them. Not the best play. We'll move on. Not his fault. Not much he can do on the kickoff there. TG just kind of bones it. Oh, so a wide rotation for his teammates. Oh, no. All right. Let's look at this play real quick. Just see what happened in the fly view. We'll go to ball. Just want to see what happened on this kickoff exactly. All right. So kickoff, uh, TG goes for it. He gets bumped up a little bit. So that's the major problem here where TG doesn't get the boost. And also gets bumped upfield while Death Pain tries to make a play, which I get. Now, the thing is, with the third player, probably shouldn't be moving up this far because, again, it's very dangerous. Uh, but he moves up that far. And then TG is just trying to hustle back, but there's not much he can do. So it's just kind of an unfortunate uh, situation where the third player just gets a really bad 50 50 as well. And then they're trying to get back, but it's not going to matter. TG probably could have made the save, but he's got no boost. I can't really fault him too hard on that. So, doesn't really work out. So, two kickoff goals in a row. Not great. That's Rocket League for you, right? You're like, great. We worked so hard to get these two goals. And then it's all for nothing. Kind of a rushed hit here. You should know that probably no one's around him. It's hard to tell sometimes where the third man is. So, I get why you would want to throw this up as quickly as you can. But he also takes a really long time to actually get to this ball. See how he kind of like ball chases again to the wall? You just got to try and read the speed and read the bounce quicker. Uh, so then he could be in a better position to go for this play. Now, the reason why I say like this is a weird hit is because he takes so long to go for this hit that if the orange player was going for the hit, he would have already hit it. Like at this point, like right here is where orange player would have probably hit the ball. So he goes late. So I don't mind when people go up and jump up for those plays on the sideways balls and just throw it downfield. Because usually it's like... Well, if I don't, maybe the other guy will, and maybe he'll have a better shot. So I just want to get it away from him. Worst case scenario, they gain possession, but it's in their half. It's it's like, eh, it's not great, but it's not the end of the world. But the problem is, he waits so long on it, so the first option would have never even happened based on the way he's hitting it now. So that's the only thing I don't really like there on that play. Except if it, that, that other guy grabbed middle boost somehow turned around, but it didn't look like he, he had enough time for that. RL Plum, nice little cutout. Ooh, but doesn't jump for this. I don't understand these plays when people just kind of give up on the ball. Like, sure, the boost, but he grabs it there. He could have jumped. Maybe just didn't see him. Maybe a ball came out. I don't know. So I don't mind this right here where he kind of is creeping forward. He's expecting RL Plum to do something. And I get it. Like, sometimes you just got to have trust in your teammates. <coughs> it didn't happen there. Nice team pinch. He actually waits on this play, which I like. So he waits, he knows that there's no threat. Like, no one's coming for the shot right away. He thinks his teammate's about to hit it, so he doesn't want to leave the wall because whoever that third player is on orange on the other side of the field could have, a, like, a potential shot right after. So if he jumps too, there's no goalie. Uh, but he just kind of waits this out, and then he's like, oh, my teammate isn't going for it right away. I have to hit this. The hit wouldn't have been that great, but it worked out to be a good team pinch. So not really his fault because I think Plum probably could have hit it. He just kind of botched it. 
And then just wait in the middle here. Nicely done. So both players creeping up a little bit. Uh, I don't mind this too much. Like on the wall when it's on their back wall, it's generally not going to go in or anything like that. And sometimes you just got to take chances in threes. So they got both bases covered. Uh, they probably didn't need TG here, but whatever, you know. They still score it. Well done. On to the kickoff. Gets the boost. See what his teammates do. No more kickoff goals, please. Nice. So I like uh, this idea here. You don't necessarily know where the last player on orange is. You just want to hit this ball. You don't want to give them that free shot. Uh, he kind of gets a little bit under the ball. Well, actually above the ball. So he, he hits it low. But I like the idea of just like we, we need to get rid of this because it is very threatening. And then his teammates just can't back him up here again. TG is in the right spot, it looks like. Yeah, just, just gets surprised by the shot. He creeps forward again. I, I don't understand this creep forward goalie uh, meta that always happens. But he creeps forward, not expecting the shot, and then he gets screwed for it. Like, did those five extra feet really matter? Not really. Uh, so, again, not really Death Pain's fault. Uh, he's having a decent game. His teammates are letting him down a little bit here, but hey, it happens. It's Rocket League. All right, so this play I don't like at all. He's going for the bump play. There's only 10 seconds left. You're tied. Like, I can see if you're down a goal. Sure, you go for a play like this. The problem is he's watching ball cam this entire time. He's probably waiting to see when the hit happens, and then he wants to turn to the goalie. But at this point, you have committed. You're, like, in the 18-yard box anyway of the other team. You need to just look for the goalie and hunt him out. Like, if this is your decision, don't watch your player hit it. Because if he misses it, by the time you turn around, you're out of the play anyway. Uh, so that would have been probably better off. But he turns there and then's like, oh, no one's here. <laughs> okay, let me leave now. His teammate uh, misses the shot, but at least he's back now. So this was a good pass and play. Plum almost scores it. Nice challenge here, though. Nice quick challenge. And can he score it? No. Looks like we're going overtime. All right, overtime. See what happens. Kick off. The pass. Not going to happen there. Just pick up some boost pads here. Just playing that third man. He, he, he doesn't have a lot of boost, so just farm up the boost pads. There we go. Now he's got a chance at a shot. Nice idea. I like the idea of trying to shoot top corner. Just didn't really work out. Uh, usually the better option is to almost always shoot for the inside post because if you miss then it turns into a pass it turns into a really good center when you shoot for outside post then um when you miss it just goes into the corner and like the play dies so most times you want to shoot for inside corner now of course like he sees the goalie the outside corner is the better option uh but that's just something to keep note of when you're shooting is that if you do shoot inside post again we talk about risk versus reward it's not really risk, but to kill the play is the risk, I guess. And, like, the inside post will give you that center. So you get kind of, like, a second chance at it. So I don't mind th uh, this idea of trying to get the dunk. The reason why is because there's only one man back left. So if you do get a piece of this and turn this into a 50-50, it's very likely a goal. Because your teammate can then clean up and score most 50-50s. Obviously, some are going to be killed into corners and stuff like that. But I don't mind this because, at worst, he loses this 50-50 and his third teammate should control the ball. So, again, risk versus uh, reward. There's not much risk here. Pretty big reward, so I like this idea. He doesn't get it, but his third player, he does get possession of the ball. <coughs> nice demo. Decent pass, but he's just, he just has to wait this out. His teammates are leaving, though, so now he can move up. Good idea. Shoots inside post, turns into a center. Almost worked out. I like the idea. He almost got the shot. No one was even actually in net, which was surprising. Like, the guy just crept out again. Everyone's just creeping out of net. Man. He's got to be a little bit careful because he's third man here. He, th uh, This one was relatively dangerous because TG is not really back yet. And he's creeping forward. And again, if this ball is lost, it could be bad. But this one is kind of balanced where it's like if they do win, it's a pretty good chance he can score. The problem is he was in a good spot. He has this entire side of the field to himself. 
just stay over here. Like, your teammate is going to hit the ball to the right, is what it looks like. Why go underneath him? He goes underneath him. He drives underneath him, and now he's in no uh, position to react to this ball anymore. Say he stayed on the right. He's arrowing for this. He's got a wide open net. He has the angle. Now he's underneath the ball and not really anywhere. Like, it seemed a little ball chasey to me. Just didn't really mean much to drive underneath that play. Just grab the boost. It's so right here. I would like to see him just grab this boost. I think the boost is here. It's hard to tell with the replay bug. But I would like to see him just front flip for that boost. Just try and keep that boost possession going. Because he didn't really have a great play. He's just in the corner. Again, he jumps extremely early. And this is one of the plays when you know someone is, like, not as highly skilled. Because look how unnecessary this is. It's the same speed. Why jump early for this? There's no reason to jump early for this. He's jumping from so far away, it just makes you lose all control. You're already supersonic. You're going the exact same speed. Just jump later when you actually need it. And then you, you can reposition and, hit, like, hit a more accurate ball. It's just not, not a good play. Not a good decision. Going for goalies. He gets a goalie while uh, uh, looking in ball cam. I thought he, he was going to, like, come back and try for the pass and play. But he goes for goalies but doesn't look at them. And, like, I've done that before, too, sometimes, where it's just like, I want to see the play. And then, like, all right, screw it. I will try and guess by sound where those cars are. But, of course, it's better, you know, to just turn off the camera and go for it. A little bit of an unnecessarily jump here. Because, like, look at this play. It, when he jumps, one, he's got zero boost. Two, the other car's already up in the air. Three, say he doesn't jump and no one hits this ball, which is the only way he hits this ball. It's going in anyway, or he can just drive underneath it and score. So, just a little bit panicky, like trying to score a goal to win overtime. Slightly poor decision making coming out late in this game. So, that was a good idea, not to jump there. He's like, I don't have an angle. My third should. He hears the jump. He immediately turns back. Now, again, here, not really sure what he's doing. He's watching ball cam at this point. Like, what exactly is the plan there by just watching the ball go over your head? The only plan would be to attack the goalie, but he's not looking at the goalie. So now he's just kind of circling underneath the ball once again. He's going to be very careful of that. He likes to just go near the ball, but is in a terrible position to do anything. Okay, let's see what he does here. Throws it off the wall to himself. He doesn't have a ton of boost, but it's more of like a threat. Which I don't mind too much here. It could turn into something, but they don't really bite on it. Nice bump again, though. Two bumps. Oh, almost works out. So this one, he jumps early-ish. But it's like it's so high in the air, it's warranted, right? You, you need to get in the air pretty early to get up to that ball. So that one, not the end of the world. Okay, no boost on him. Kind of an unnecessary jump. I think he's just worrying about the shot. He just wants to help try and block some things, which is fine. It's not the worst case. Ooh, TG just a little bit off. Like, I like what TG was trying to do here. And the, oh, this is a good 50 50 to throw at center. Just a little bit mispositioned. And that's just kind of you have to guess and hope for the best. Did he, miss, did he miss that boost twice? No, okay. He did grab it. Just didn't make the sound. Alright. Just got the ball. Where are you driving to at that point? Like, I get it at the start of this. What you want to do generally on this play is hook to the left or hook to the right of the screen. So that way. Um, and then, like, in case it's wide, you, like, redirect it in, right? But, like, after the shot, it's weak, and he just continues to drive forward? Where are you going? Where are you going? There's nothing to do there. There's three cars behind you. It's pointless. But at least he he gets the boost eventually, but, like, he could have attacked that boost so much quicker, and then who knows? Maybe he's got a better chance at the shot because he's already on a different angle. So just some unnecessary driving. 
Nice bump again, though. Like, I like the idea of him going for the bumps on these plays. Just sometimes his positional play around the ball is just like, I want to be near it. I want to be part of the conversation. It's kind of like when five people are in a circle talking and you kind of try and creep in, but no one actually moves. So you're just standing outside the circle and you look like an asshole <laughs> while they're just talking about whatever they're talking about. And you stand there for like five minutes, and it's a little bit awkward, and then you finally move. And that's kind of what's been going on. Here. All right. It's a long overtime. He's getting, uh, he's getting a lot for his money here. We'll probably just play this out at this point just because we've talked a lot, and this one's a relatively long replay analysis. So I'll probably just talk it out. Unfortunate dunk there. He could have remedied it a little bit by throwing it lower, but... Didn't cost him yet. Some misses here. Oh, nice play by Plum to at least make up for the miss. He's got no boost. Couldn't decide what he wanted to do there. Instead, he gets no boost. Like, he wanted the boost, but then he's like, ah, oh, the ball's not going quick enough. And he could have passed it back to his teammates. He could have. It's dangerous, but he could have. Should be a save. Oh, damn. That should have been a save. I thought he had it. He's just got to cut more into the net. Like, I think people get nervous when the ball's on the goal line. And they try and rush it out quicker than they need when the whole ball has to cross the goal line. He could have probably got a much better angle here and then side flipped into it. Uh, but close. It was a tough save. It doesn't work out there. But uh, for the most part, like I thought during uh, a regulation time, he was doing pretty well. Uh, some small position players, but then over time it started to escalate where it's like, all right, the pressure's getting there. And maybe that's why it's like, oh, I really want to score this goal or I really want to be part of this play. When you all have to be a part of every play. It was like strange because I felt like in the beginning, very passive, clean rotations. Sometimes probably should have moved up further. Then at the end, it was like, all right, I'm going to go for bump plays, which is good. But then other plays where it's like, the ball is kind of near me, and I'm just going to drive close to it. Like, I want to be part of this conversation, which doesn't really help anyone. Uh, so just got to work on that, those decision makings on the positional plays. Uh, besides that, though, not too bad. And uh, thank you, Death Pain, for the replay. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.